Hey, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stella and I make programming tutorial videos. Today I'll be teaching you how to debug your Java program in Visual Studio Code. If you don't have Java or Visual Studio Code installed, I made a video about that and I will link it above. So let's get started. Here is a simple Java program that I made. It will call upon the method Stella and then it will print out hello world five times. After the method is done, the program will print out done. So let's give this a quick run. Awesome, hello world is printed out five times and then it's done. Now it's time to start debugging. If we have a simple application that we want to debug like this one, we can press F5 or if you're a Mac user, FNF5, and VS Code will automatically debug your current file. You can also go to the left and click on this icon right here and click run and debug. There's also an option to create a launch configuration file by creating a launch.json file. This will allow you to configure and save your debugging setup details and you can have multiple debuggers that will show up on the menu right here. In this file, you'll have the chance to customize your debugging attributes. To know which attributes are available to your specific debugger, press Control and Space to access the IntelliSense suggestions. As well, if you want to add a configuration, you have an option of either a launch or attach debug mode. Since we are running in Java, we will be using these options right here. Choosing between them depends on your workflow as you are either launching a program in debug mode or attaching it to an already running program in debug mode. After you're done making the changes, you can save this file and now you're ready to start debugging. We can close the launch.json file and then we will go back to our debugger.java file. First things first, we will need a few breakpoints, and breakpoints are an intentional pause placed by the user to let us inspect the code while it's running. So there are three different types of breakpoints. The first breakpoint is the simple breakpoint when you can initiate a pause in your running program by going to the left and clicking on one of these red bubbles. So right now I have set a simple breakpoint at line five, and when the program is being debugged, it will pause right at line five. The second option is the conditional breakpoint, and this breakpoint will only pause when the condition you set is true. Let's test that out in another simple program I wrote. This program will return the number 5 times 3. I will set a conditional breakpoint at line 4 by right clicking on the red bubble and add conditional breakpoint. My condition will be if answer does not equal num plus num plus num. And to set this condition, we will press enter. So we can see right here, instead of a red bubble, we have a red bubble with an equal sign in it. This indicates that you have set a conditional breakpoint. Since the equation is num times 3, it should be the same thing as adding num 3 times. Therefore, when we run this debugger, the expression is false and we should not stop at the breakpoint. The program did not stop at line 4 and it returned our output 15, which we were expecting. However, what happens if we change our expression? So for example, num times three, let's make it num times three plus one. And then let's save this file and see if our program will stop at line four or not. So once we start the debugger, we can see that we have stopped at line four. This was because in our expression, we say answer does not equal num plus num plus num, which was true. Num plus itself three times is not equal to num times three plus one. Therefore, our program stopped at line four. This indicates that there's a problem in your code as the number you were expecting was not the same number that was calculated. This is a good small test you can do to ensure that your code is running correctly. The third breakpoint option is a log point. So let's go back to our original code. A log point will not pause at the line, but it will output the variables you select in the terminal. This is useful to see the values of your expressions, especially if you're in a loop. For example, if I set a log point at line six by right clicking and clicking on add log point, we can add a log message. For example, I would like it to output the value of I. After we are done writing our message, we will press enter and we can see that our log point is represented by a red diamond. I'll get rid of this simple breakpoint and now we will run our debugger again just to see what is going to be outputted. So not only does the program output our original print statement of hello world, it also outputs the value of variable i at each instance of the loop. It was first at zero and because of the i increment, it became one. There are also tools you can use while debugging your code. So let's get rid of this log point and set up two simple breakpoints at line four and line six. 
And then let's run our debugger. We are stopped at line four because this is where our first simple breakpoint is. One thing about this breakpoint is that it actually stops before the line is executed. That is why hello world is not stored in the string variable greetings yet and does not show up in our local variables. The first button we will look at is the continue button. This button will let you jump from one breakpoint to another, or if there's no more breakpoints, it will complete the program. Since line four and line five have been executed, they have also been stored in our local variables. What's really cool about this is that you can go inside greetings and actually see the ASCII values of every character. The next button we will look at is the step over button, where it allow you to step through your code line by line. This is useful when you have a lot of methods being called so you can keep track of how your code is being executed. This down arrow icon is the step into button where you can see what I like to call the hidden code of Java. It shows you exactly what your Java program is doing. The icon right next to it is the step out of button and allow you to step out of a function in one large jump instead of going line by line. The green refresh icon will let you restart your debugger from the start. Another cool thing about the debugger is that at the bottom, we can click on debug console and we can change the value of the variables to test our expressions. For example, let's get i into our local variables and now i is stored as zero. Let's try and test our for loop condition where i is equal to zero, i is less than five, and i is incremented by one. So what happens if we set i equal to three? Would we be able to continue to be in the for loop? Let's continue. And we can see here in the terminal, it has outputted hello world three because we were at line six and it incremented I by one to four. Since four is less than five, we are still in this for loop. However, what if we changed I into, let's say 10. So I is equal to 10. Now, when we go back to the terminal and we decide to continue, the program will output hello world 10 because we were at line six and line six needs to be executed. However, it jumped out of the for loop because 10 plus one is equal to 11 and 11 is greater than five and no longer meets the for loop condition. There's one more tool I want to show you. So let's run this debugger again. And the red box icon is a stop button. So when you press it, it'll automatically stop our debugger. And that concludes my video on how to debug a Java program in Visual Studio Code. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I make videos like this every single week, so if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any comments, questions, or even requests for future tutorial videos, please make sure to leave them down in the comment box below. Other than that, thank you again for watching my video, and I'll see you next week.